Hello, and welcome to this community track from Fire Dev Days called Data Quality in Fire, Lessons Learned from the Field. I'm Carol Graham, and I am a registered nurse and an informaticist with over 25 years of combined experience in healthcare delivery and healthcare IT. And I am currently a project, a product manager with a company called Clinical Architecture based in Carmel, Indiana. By way of background or context, I want to give a little information about my company. First of all, we're founded in 2007 with a focus on healthcare enterprise data quality. We have three primary solution platforms that implement or support FHIR in one way or another. And our experience includes providing a full array of subscribable FHIR content, providing FHIR terminology services, performing patient message transformations to and from FHIR, including structural transformation and content transformation or content mapping, and in, also includes implementing FHIR clinical resources across our next generation clinical information platform. So based on that experience, I'd like to talk about data quality lessons that we've learned and uh, share some of those with you. Most of our time today, we'll spend on the lessons learned part of the best practices, and we'll have an eye toward how the flexibility offered by the FHIR specification should be balanced by attention to these terminology best practices that we're gonna talk about. So point of emphasis on the use cases that I'll talk about, while all the best practices that are relevant to both solution implementers and terminology services implementers, I'm gonna focus on the point of view of the solution implementer, and I'm not planning to go into the depth that's required for the terminology service implementers. So I also, for time's sake, have to assume that you have certain knowledge base, and here's the list of information that I have to assume. I will call your attention to one thing that in, the grander world of HL7, a value set definition and a value set expansion are considered to be two separate things. But for implementation reasons, FHIR treats those as a single resource called a value set. And so that's the way I'll use the term value set today throughout this presentation, where the definition and the expansion are considered part of the same thing. As a guiding principle, we can break up our way of thinking or our abstract idea of data quality into things that we can try to measure or achieve. And so I'll use these four C's as a way to organize the best practices and help you ensure that your data is correct, that it's current, that it is consistent, and that it's complete. So we're gonna start with correctness. And structural correctness may seem self-evident, but it is foundational to interoperability, and so it's worth mentioning. Terminology bindings are also essential to semantic understanding of FHIR messages. So while we know that the sending system should be making use of a proper FHIR terminology service, we also do want to make sure that we verify those received codes and not just assume that they're correct, and also not just verify that our sent codes are correct. Regarding identifiers, we wanna make sure that we only use the ID for local server functions and not for message exchange. And for message exchange, the identifier that we should use is the canonical URL. Of, and that is across messages, across um, servers, et cetera. That, that value is persistent. And then, except when a canonical URL is not available, we should largely ignore the other fire identifiers like OIDs. Although OIDs and URNs do have their place as a fire identifier, and they're, they're just lower in the hierarchy. So from a perspective of current, how do we make sure our data is current? One of the things we should especially pay attention to is to ensure that we have alignment between the FHIR version on the resources that are being generated and the value sets that are used to populate the elements on those resources. Those can easily become misaligned if the terminology services and the other FHIR services are living on different servers. 
Other best practices related to data governance have to do with ensuring that your usage of value sets is consistent with your organization's policies on active versus inactive, active versus draft or retired. One thing I will call to your attention is two known use cases where inactive codes can be valid are the need to represent historical data or the need to do quality measurement lookbacks, which often do times, oftentimes do require codes or terms that have been retired or made inactive. From a standpoint of consistency, probably the most important thing I can call to your attention is to pay attention to the terminology servers capability statement. That, that allows a server by fire specification to define default behaviors like what code systems and what versions are supported, things like pagination, term count limits, on um, an expand operation, how many terms would be returned or not, which operations are and aren't done, which searches and filters are supported. And so the thing to note is that even if your application or your solution behaves consistently, that variations between servers can give you inconsistent results for the same implementation. And that's why, especially if you're changing from one fire server to another, that it's very important to pay attention to the capability statement and make sure all the services and functionality that you need are supported. Next related to consistency, our friend terminology bindings comes back into play especially in the context of exchanging existing clinical data that needs to be converted to fire or non-fire structures that need to be converted to fire and in these ways automated terminology management solutions can particularly be useful in improving accuracy and consistency of mappings and also in reducing the repetitive human workload that is required for doing mapping in some of the more traditional or less automated ways. Regarding preferred display, while FIRED certainly allows for more than one code translation to be transmitted and allows for application specific displays to be transmitted, it's useful to note that if an underlying code system does define the, such a thing as preferred terms or preferred display, that the FIRE specification expects that that would be transmitted. Also related to consistency are a couple of best practices around managing dynamic content. And in this case, the key thing to do is to ensure that you're using a content management approach that gives the latest and greatest set of codes whenever an underlying code system is updated. And since various code systems have different schedules or different mechanisms for updating, then it's important to pay attention to how you're using dynamic content to make sure that you're keeping it fresh and current and consistent. And the last of our four C's is completeness. First, I wanna say a word on caching or storing value set expansions. We know that in FIRE's philosophy, a value set is stateless. And so in theory, an expansion should be generated every time that it's needed. But we also know that in reality, that's not feasible or performant. And so value sets are commonly stored or value set expansions are commonly stored for performance reasons. It's just important to make sure that if you are storing or caching a local copy of a value set expansion that along with that you store the filters, search parameters, code system version, date, and so forth that were used to generate that expansion so that as you're using it you know exactly what you're using and what you're getting. Then regarding value set extensions and extensible bindings, value set extensions are commonly used in FIRE profiles and an extensible value set binding is a little bit more flexible than a required value set binding and what it allows for is the use or the addition of more value set members or more codes or terms that may not have existed in the original code systems that that value set was drawn from, but those may be needed for the purpose of this particular profile. So especially when you're working with profiles, you'll need a mechanism to validate and persist any of those additional codes that come from value set extensions. And so in wrapping up, 
I'd like to thank you for joining me on our whirlwind tour of data quality in fire. And I would like to reiterate that while fire's flexibility certainly reduces the barriers to implementation, that flexibility needs to be balanced with best practices in using terminology. And I hope that by following the four C's as we've outlined today, that you can help move your organization along its journey to higher data quality. Lastly, if you, I'd like to thank you for your attention and invite you to reach out to me if you have follow-up questions or would like more information. And at this time, I believe the floor is open for questions.